presenting, learning artistic style for real-time solution of videos. Uh, some of you might have seen our demo at the table. Uh, so basically, I want to dig a bit in how it works, what it does, uh, what are your challenges. So the outline, basically, I'll be covering what is style transfer, just to give uh, base knowledge to everybody. Uh, discussing a bit the VGG16 classifier. I'll be, oops, sorry. I'll be uh, talking about Gettys Neural Style, which is the landmark paper, paper that started this whole field. Uh, Johnson Fast Neural Style, which improved it. And then I'll be discussing our improvement. So how we stabilized it for video and made possible the demo that uh, some of you have been seeing. Uh, then I'll be discussing trade-offs uh, because you can't have something for free. And I'll go a bit into other considerations at the end. So basically, style transfer. In a style tra transfer, you start from a source image. I'm not sure if my pointer is visible. Uh, here on the right, which is basically an image you want to transform. So here you see my two colleagues, Phil and Jean. Uh, this is the first time this thing started working. Uh, you start also with a style. Uh, this is a mural from Montreal called uh, Notre Dame de Grasse. And basically what you obtained is a resulting image which combines the style of the artwork you want, but also contains all the information, all the eye level information of the source. So if you look at it, you readily recognize the image. So it's sort of copying the style of an artist. And our, the, the task is to have a machine learn this style. So before we can discuss it in detail, we need a few background items that might not seem related, but it's really the crux of how it works. So the first thing we need to know is how VGG16 works. So VGG16 is a classifier. Uh, it's able to take a source image and output a category, uh, what is in the image. Uh, VGG16 was made for the uh, inception, uh, for the, sorry, ImageNet competition, where you had about a thousand categories. The categories are stuff like person, soccer ball, pizza, and so on. And this solution that works very, really well is a deep convolutional network. Uh, it's been developed by the Visual Geometry Group from the University of Oxford. So basically what it does, it does a bunch of convolution uh, neural network, uh, followed by convolution layer, followed by rectifier linear unit at multiple points. And regularly, we put in between max pool layer. Uh, each max pool will reduce the size of the image. So for that competition, the network we also decided to use, we start with a 224 by 224 image. And as we go deeper and deeper, what the network does is that it increments the number of component, but it reduces the size. So by the time we get to the end, we have a thousand categories on a one by one pixel. So there's only one thing that is identified in the image. The last three layers are fully connected layers to sort of compute from the, future, from the feature what is in the image. And at the very end, we've got a soft max because we want to output probability. So for this specific image, uh, VGG16 tells us that it's 95% sure it is a soccer ball, and there's 2.5% chance it might be a rugby ball, and all the other categories are present too. Okay, so first person to come up with the idea of style transfer, Gedes et al, uh, in their paper, An Algorithm for Arctic Style. What they did, basically, same problem a style, a source, a target. They want to find the target that looks like the style and the source. What they did, they come up with the idea of using a classifier, the VGG16 classifier. And the technique is to keep two things. They extract the early activation of the classifier and the late activation. So at two different points in the network, we extract the uh, activation of the network. 
we totally discard the output because we don't care what is actually in the image. And we'll be performing gradient descent on the target. So basically, the image we're looking for, this is the space we're searching in. There's two loss functions that are needed for this to work well. The first one is the style loss function. So basically, it minimizes the difference in early activation between the style and the target. So the way we have to see this to understand it is an image has the same style of another one. If early in a network that classifies it, it looks the same. With the theory that in order to classify is that a car or a fish, the first thing I'll be able to capture in my neural network is are there scale, is there bright area, are there lines. So very local feature. At that point, the neural network didn't process the image too much. The second last function we want is to keep the style. If we want to recognize the image at the end, it's got to look the same as our target image. But the overall feature is something that is way more helpful to classify the image. So it should be closer to the output of the network, just before those fully connected uh, layers. So we keep the late activation of the source. So once we've put those two loss functions in, we can do the gradient descent in the target image. And we can search through the space. The space is huge because we need to check basically every, every, every level for every component of every pixel. So typically on a 224 by 224 image, uh, the space is super large, uh, but it would produce very high quality, very high quality image. For example, uh, we can see here, uh, Sanford building and the Starry Night style uh, the result is absolutely amazing. It's way better than wa what our demo does. But you need one or two days per image. Nice technique, not useful for real time. Uh, next paper that changed the area is uh, Johnson, Alai, and Feifei uh, to come up with perception loss for real time transfer and super resolution. So we won't discuss super resolution, but we'll discuss the first part, which allows it to work in real time. So basically, what they did is they come up with the idea of using a neural network that is trained to do directly the transformation from the source to the target. So just like our demo, there's a CNN there that transform directly between source and target. OK, this is probably the most complex of, of the slide. Here we see the architecture of the CNN that is used in real time. Uh, it doesn't have to be this one. It could be pretty much anything. But this is one that Johnson found to be very useful that works really well. So I'll just quickly go over it. Uh, what it does mainly is that it does convolution and deconvolution. Uh, it uses batch normalized and relus. And the general architecture is the first part will shrink down the image in size. Uh, a total of about the quarter of the image. Uh, we reduce twice the dimension by two uh, in, with the batch normalization and reuse in between. And later on at the end, we will upscale the image. So we'll do deconvolution to match those convolution. We'll also do batch norm and reuse in between. And there's different kernel size there that were found to work well. The middle part, is composed of five blocks. Uh, each block does three by three uh, kernel convolution, uh, again, which batch norm and reuse in between. And th there's five times those block of four layers. So basically, this network is mixing the pixel locally. It's looking at area around every pixel and performing a pretty complex mathematic operation on it. But it's still not so deep that it cannot be done real time. So it's still pretty fast. Okay, so if we put back that network here in the red box in the train CNN, uh, next thing I'll describe is how we train it. Uh, as we start, this network is not trained, it's all random weight. So we'll use exactly the same technique as Getty's used originally. 
with the classifier, the style image, keeping early and late activation. But because we want to train the convolution neural network ahead of time, before we stylize our image, we cannot do the training with the image. At that point, we don't have an image yet. So we'll use any data set, uh, ideally a data set that resembles what you want to stylize. So in our case, we took the MS Coco data set. Uh, it's very generic. It's got lots of uh, different type of image in it. Uh, we could have done a better job by using, for example, conference image. Uh, our boot would have worked better. So again, same thing. We keep the we minimize the style uh, difference by comparing the style and the stylized version of the dataset image. We also keep the feature by minimizing the difference between the dataset and the stylized late activation. And the resulting is that we've got fast inference and we get a bit less richness in style because this neural network has slightly less parameter than the old image. Uh, we cannot get the same quality, but we get close enough. So here I'll be showing a video what we obtain if we use Johnson's technique out of the box for video by applying frame by frame. So as you see here, this is a, just our office stylized with uh, one of those uh, murals. You can see lots of popping uh, on the top around the column here. Uh, it's quite distracting and it wouldn't do for real-time use in general. Uh, from style to style, you'll have different things that would be popping around. Uh, the reason for this popping is that no temporal coherence is enforced by the network. Uh, every frame is processed differently and we didn't tell the network that this would be annoying. So our approach to fixing this popping problem was to add noise to the data set. Uh, it's basically a regularization solution that we used. So for each image of the data set, we added noise and we passed both the original data set image and the noisy image through the convolution neural network, which give us two sets of stylized image. We kept most of the loss function the same. The two loss function originally there would be kept, but we put a third one. The third loss function that we introduced was the difference of stylized between original and noisy image. So basically we're telling the neural network, if you stylize an image and adding a few noisy pixel and you get a different style, stylized image, that's not good. Don't do that. Give us a stylization that doesn't change too much when you add just a few uh, pixel of noise. Uh, we can see here it's a bit more clear. That a set image go through the target CNN and get noise also go through the target CNN and we add a mean square error on the stylization. So what that does is that it forces the network to not be affected by small changes. And in order to do it, its job, then it's got to snap the feature. For example, if it decide to paint with dots or lines or any texture element, it will snap them to the content because that's where most of the pixels are. <clears throat> so noise characteristic, what we found to work well. Uh, modifying 1.5% of the pixel, so very little change to, to the image. Adding plus or minus 30 in every channel, so uniform noise over uh, 30 range. Uh, it's not a big difference, and image with this noise, I wanted to put a picture of this, uh, it's not even visible, it's just some pixel change. And the funny thing that we learned is that we can pre-compute the noise that we use in the data set ahead of time. We can use the same noise over and over again. As it turned out, just uh, drawing the random number was just as costly as running the old training. So using the same noise over all image, uh, we couldn't see any difference in the end. So here, once we put that in, this is the result we get. 
So if you compare with the original image, uh, no more popping on the column, the ceiling is still nice, and the rest is almost as good. So simple realization, uh, huge result. There's no free lunch though. Uh, as, soon, as soon as you change the loss function, a couple other presenter mentioned that, uh, you will affect everything. Is there's a way to cheat? Well, your network will cheat. So what happens here is the sky. Uh, this is the Tubingen image, uh, the classic one in style transfer. The sky is all blue. So our neural network trained with stabilization could not produce such a rich sky because from frame to frame, it's blue. Over, it's the same blue all over. So if it was able to come up with the pattern, it would have to rely on some extra information. So because that information is not there, uh, two adjacent pixels will have the same receptive field. So it's not able to. It will produce just a bland color with some little variation in. Uh, by tweaking the weight, we can get the sky to be completely uniform, but then we start losing on features. Uh, so there's a trade-off being done there. Uh, interestingly, though, the colors are almost better in the, uh, in the center of the picture by doing this stabilization. Okay, uh, tweaking the noise parameters. Uh, I've presented three parameters that could be tuned. The noise range, the numbers of pixel modified, and the weight given to this loss function in the training. So my plan was to have the next slide showing you how we pick those and an automatic way of picking them. Uh, sadly, nope. Uh, here I've got four images, uh, different manual uh, tests we've done. What you see is that you get more or less noise in, well, features in the area that are uniform. Uh, the more weight you get, the more uniform you get, the more stable it will be. But sadly, there is no way to do it automatically. We were considering looking at the various ratios. And what's interesting is that very quickly, as you start the learning, you can weight those a lot more or a lot less. It will converge very quickly before it even gets to the final result. All the feature loss relative to the style loss relative to the pop uh, loss function will get the same. So we didn't figure any way to tweak those automatically. So the technique is just to try. 1.5%, uh, 30, and 1,000 weight for us worked well, but I cannot give you a perfect recipe. And this is the total loss. Again, uh, whatever parameter we used, we get the same profile. So no easy tweak. Uh, this is what we found worked well for us. OK, some other engineering concern. Uh, before we started, there was some demo with uh, lots of popping available on the web, uh, things that four, five frames per second. Uh, the one piece mainly they were missing is do everything on the GPU. Uh, you can get a camera that feeds you H264. Uh, you can process that on the GPU. You can decode on the GPU, do the inference, and directly to the display. Uh, quite often, it's small engineering uh, task that makes a difference between a product or no product. Uh, for performance, what we found <coughs> is that resolution was really uh, the key element. Uh, it's not very possible to shrink this network much smaller. So then you're affected mainly by the fill rate. So resolution is our limitation. And avoiding extra work. For example, uh, when we started, there were those special uh, filter mode for convolution for the borders. Well, just don't care about those. Crop the image. Uh, when you're doing art, uh, you can get away with uh, lots of tweaks like those. And they contribute to quite a lot of the performance. OK, uh, acknowledgment very quickly. Uh, Get this neural style transfer uh, landmark paper. Johnson, we improved on it. Uh, the two murals that I use are from Montreal, Notre Dame de Grasse and an untitled one. And without VGG16, uh, this technique would not be possible. 
And all the code we use and started from are from a Chainer implementation, so a Chainer fast neural style. So uh, that's it. Thank you. And uh, any questions?